This is the USS Valiant. It's the second Defiant class ship we're introduced to during DS9's run. It appears in the episode Valiant. In this video, we'll take a look at that ship's backstory, random details, and the other minor visual tweaks made to differentiate it from Defiant. This is the USS Valiant. Starting off with the name Valiant, at one point during development, the USS Defiant was going to be named Valiant. That plan changed because the USS Voyager was going to debut in a few months, and the showrunners didn't want to have two ships with names starting with V. The name Valiant was a nod to the SS Valiant, which was featured in the second original series pilot where no man has gone before. Specifically, the SS Valiant was destroyed centuries earlier and only the flight recorder appeared on screen. However, years later, Michael Akuta and Greg Jean constructed a reference model that appeared in the Star Trek Encyclopedia. So that's the story behind the name. When we look at the exterior, the only difference are the hull markings. The name and registry number on the USS Defiance CG model was updated to read USS Valiant, NCC 74210. This ship's registry number is NCC 74210, USS Valiant. Notice here the registry number starts with NCC as opposed to NX to let us know that Defiant class ships were no longer considered experimental. The bridge is where we're going to find the most differences from the USS Defiant. When you look here along Defiant's walls, you'll see pale blue colored padding. On Valiant, this color is swapped out for red. You can see it along the wall, then the trim on the top of the ops console. And the captain's chair's metal structure is also red, whereas it's gray on Defiant. I'm sure Defiant also had this since it's basically the same chair, but we get to see the headrest extended on Valiant. I couldn't find an instance where the Defiant's headrest was ever extended like this. Evidence! Evidence! Moving beyond the bridge, we get to see Valiant's ready room. Like the bridge set, it's also a redress of Defiant set. The most visible alteration is this giant Red Squadron decoration. What's Red Squadron? Well, let's dive into that and take a look at the events and details within the episode Valiant. Valiant's entire crew was comprised of Red Squadron cadets. Red Squadron, or Red Squad for short, was a company of elite Starfleet cadets on a covert training mission where they were to maintain radio silence with Starfleet until the conclusion of their assignment, which was to gather intel. This mission was led by actual Starfleet commanding officers who were to observe and grade their performance. They were deep in Cardassian space when the Dominion War broke out. Not long after that, all the commanding officers were killed during a battle and Red Squad assumed command of the ship. Cadet Waters assumed the role of captain. He ordered Red Squad to stick to their initial mission parameters by maintaining radio silence. They remained behind enemy lines for over a year continuing their mission leading into the events of this episode. The episode begins with the USS Valiant saving Jake Sisko and Nog from the Jem'Hadar. Once aboard, Nog is immediately promoted to Chief Engineer because he knows how to fix warp drives. It isn't long before Jake picks up on a strong Lord of the Flies vibe from the crew. Red Squad, Red Squad, Red Squad. The Valiant has basically completed its mission, but Captain Waters wants to go on one more mission to destroy a Dominion battleship. We're Red Squad, and we can do anything. It's a foolhardy mission that Jake objects to, but Nog is all in because he's honored to be a part of Red Squad. Basically, he's drunk the Kool-Aid. During the episode, Nog is modifying a torpedo. It looks like a reuse of the torpedo prop used in Star Trek 2, 3, and 6. And Generations. And, well, it's used a lot. Long story short, the mission fails, the Valiant is destroyed, and practically everyone dies. This episode features the new Starfleet cadet uniforms. It aired in 1998, so it's based on the standard uniforms that debuted in First Contact, which is from 1996. Overall, they're almost identical in design, but the black is replaced with gray, and the command division colors are on the shoulders instead of the collar. It's a clear evolution from the cadet uniforms shown in earlier episodes. Red Squad wears a custom pin on their collars, too. They're kind of like the Cobra Kai of the Star Trek universe. I can't hear you! Strike first! Strike first! Red Squad! Red Squad! Red Squad! 
When you take a closer look at their pins, you'll see this star. This is the same star worn by command officers during the original series. To my knowledge, this is the first time we see this star during the Next Generation era, letting us know that it's still in use on some level. And this is one of the best DS9 episodes. It combines elements from the TNG episodes, Lower Decks, and The First Duty. In case you need a refresher, Lower Decks is the episode that's centered on younger officers aboard the Enterprise D. And First Duty focused on Nova Squadron, who's led by someone who's not Tom Paris. It also has some strong similarities to the 2009 reboot, where a cadet is immediately promoted to captain, then that captain takes on a much larger vessel, just with better results. So that's the video. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the USS Valiant. I'd like to thank these lunatics for helping support the channel. It's much appreciated. If you've just stumbled upon this video, I covered the USS Defiant in other videos. You can check them out by heading over to the channel. In any case, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.